Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Ah! Son of a bitch! They got me. Uh, yep, yeah, that stainless is sharp. Oh well. Welcome back to the channel. Fucker. Now what we have here is a large pile of steel. And they all have one thing in common. Oh yeah. Way too big. These projects are all way too big to fit on my CNC plasma table. And I have a Langmuir Crossfire Pro plasma table. And this thing will roughly cut 48 inches by I think 32 or 33 inches deep. None of these would have fit on there. So, what do you do? Before we get into all that, let's go ahead and get this stuff pulled off the pile and see exactly what we have here. You're also going to get a little sneak peek of some big projects that I'll be doing here on the channel. This one right here, I'm very excited about. It's probably a two-man job. This, for all of my Langmuir Crossfire Pro plasma table fans, this is a new stainless steel water table that I designed for my Crossfire Pro. It is all one piece, totally different mounting system, and a much better drain system. We're gonna be tackling this in another video. I'm gonna make a full-on dedicated video on this, the whole install, along with this. Well, you'll see. I wonder where I'm gonna put this thing. Yep. <sighs> Whoopsie. And, holy shit. These are heavy. Along with the new water table for the Langmuir Crossfire Pro, I needed larger slats. So I created a file for some larger slats and these are stainless steel. Pretty excited about these as well. And I have another set of stainless steel slats for the original table on the Langmuir Crossfire Pro. So if you were interested in a set of stainless steel slats for your Crossfire Pro water table, I have a set here for sale. They're pretty damn heavy, so shipping is expensive, but you're probably looking at 200 bucks for these. These were not cheap, plus shipping. So, nice chunk of change, but they're definitely gonna last. Oh, bless it. They're made out of lead. Then we have, you might be able to tell the shape of this, it's shaped like the end of a picnic table. And some of you may or may not recognize that logo right there. It's for another YouTube channel. This is going to be a future collaboration. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these things off. We'll take a better look. These are gonna be fucking heavy, I already know that. Oh yeah, it's quarter inch plate. Not something I even wanna be messing around with. Oh, it's not too bad, not too bad. Will they stand on their own? No. What we have here is a picnic table kit that I designed. It was not my idea. I can't take credit for that, but I did design it. And this is the logo of Steve's Build a Life. I'm gonna be doing a future collaboration with Steve on his property out in Kentucky. I'll leave a link for Steve's channel down in the description. So this again, another future video. These are gonna be pretty cool, but unfortunately, I don't have the capability of making something like this in my little shop. And I had two kits made, four table ends, and four brackets. Yeah. Here are the brackets. These are two inches wide by quarter inch thick, flat plate. These were also laser cut, and they have predetermined angles in them. These are the cross braces that mount up and keep the picnic table stable. All of the holes, everything are already pre-cut, no drilling required. Very nice little kit. Now you'll see here on these picnic table brackets, we have brakes in them already. We have a brake for the bench, we have a brake for the feet in case you wanna mount some kind of feet or mount that thing to the concrete. And there's another brake up top where all of the two by 10 treated lumber is going to attach. And you'll see all of the holes are already laser cut. There are two holes for the angular brackets that will shoot up to the middle and mount to the bottom of the treated lumber. Now you'll see here, this is quarter inch plate. For one, material handling on quarter inch plate is a job in itself if you're not set up for it. And having a brake large enough to make these brakes, not gonna happen in this shop. And last but not least, the one that probably most people are curious about, this is gonna give it all away. So sneak peek for sure. Everything that you see right here, all quarter inch plate. Now this one is a big spoiler. I really wanted to keep it a secret, but I wanna share this information today, so 
you might be able to see what this is. A lot of you probably know right away. This is a bench top for the wood splitter. So the cat's out of the bag now. We're gonna be building a vertical splitter. This is the bench top. We got a break there, a break in the back, and the splitter beam is gonna be mounting right there. And next to it is our log lift. We're gonna be also installing a log lift on that splitter. And here are some other brackets that I designed. These are gonna be all the hinge points here, and there's a stack of them there for the log lift. Now this project, I'm pretty damn excited about. I'm not gonna be starting it for another probably two, maybe even three weeks yet because I really wanna get that ultimate welding cart done first. I had some other things made for the ultimate welding cart as well. Nothing crazy, so I'm gonna hold off showing you that piece. But this build is going to be awesome. I'm really excited to see all the parts here and um, definitely looking forward to getting started on it. So let me explain to you this whole process, why I do it this way, and give you some options if you're in the same boat that I'm in. And ladybugs, Japanese beetles, I mean. Japanese beetles. Heard a little story from the neighbor. Apparently back in the day, someone had the bright idea to dump a massive amount of these Japanese beetles down here in Southern Indiana. Maybe some other areas too, I don't know. I forgot the reasoning for it, but apparently it backfired, didn't go as planned, and now they just infest the area along with stink bugs. Stink bugs are pretty bad too. Anyways, don't get me started on all that crap. Now, most of you know that watch the channel regularly that I have a Langmuir Crossfire Pro CNC plasma table. I've got many videos using it. If you're curious about it, I've got a ton of videos where I go over all the details, all the equipment that you need. I have marketing strategies, all kinds of good information. And like always, I will leave links in the description along with a discount code that'll save you hundred bucks at checkout. whoop de doo So for one, very excited, not to get off subject again, but Really looking forward to the new water table because it's bigger, better drain system, better mounting system, no more leaking ever. That one will be coming maybe next week. So if you're interested, subscribe. Now I absolutely love this Langmuir Crossfire Pro. I've used it a ton. I've made a lot of money with it. It's paid for itself time after time after time, but it has its limitations. It cannot cut projects that large. They just don't fit on the table. Now, Langmuir does offer a four x eight table, the XR, which I would love to upgrade to one day. And I will upgrade to one day. I just need to get the shop set up. I'm not gonna get too ahead of myself right now. And on top of it not being able to cut something that large, I'm also not set up to be handling that heavy gauge of material. Quarter inch plate is heavy I don't have an overhead crane in here. I don't have a jib crane. I don't have a forklift. I just have a 36 by 40 shop here. It's not even set up yet. Everything you see in here is all just kind of temporarily in place just so I can function and work out of here. So one day I will be able to manage quarter inch plate, but right now, no. So I guess my whole point to this video is that just because a job is too large for your plasma table or whatever it is that you're doing, maybe you can't handle the material. Just because it's too large, don't shy away from that job. There are other options. And what I've done is I found a reputable fab shop that has a very large CNC fiber table. They literally have every single piece of metal fabricating equipment that you could think of, overhead cranes. They've got big storage racks where they have all different kinds of materials and gauges. I just don't have that. And you know what? I really don't need all that. I don't have any plans of having all that. I like my little shop here. I do my little niche and that's it. But from time to time I get a big job. I create the file for it on Fusion 360. I send them the file, they give me some pricing, they cut it out for me, they make all the breaks, all the bends, any welding if I need them to weld on it, and I go pick it up, it's that easy. I know this is a lot of talking, just like normal, but this is good information that I wanna share with you because if you're getting into CNC plasma cutting or small metal fabrication work and you have a small shop, this could be a huge deterrent right off the bat, knowing that you can't take on larger projects. What are you supposed to do, tell people no? Well, you don't have to tell people no. There's certain jobs that I sub out. If the material thickness is just too big, too heavy for me to manage, I'll sub it out. If the project's too large, I'll sub it out. If the detail on the cuts is too small that the kerf width on my plasma cutter just can't do it, I'll sub it out to that fiber machine. It cuts extremely small detail. If I need brakes done or any specific kind of welding, like TIG welding on stainless steel, which is something that 
I'm not very good at. I've actually never tried it. I just started learning how to TIG weld. So these are things I'll just sub out. Now, if these projects are for me, having that relationship with this fab shop is great because they give me better pricing. And if the project is for a customer, I'll have them make it. I'll do all the logistics. I'll make the file. I'll facilitate the whole thing. And then when I get that piece back, I basically will mark it up anywhere from 20 to 30 percent and I'll sell it to the customer. So I'm still making money. I'm still making my time worth it. So moral of the story, find yourself a fab shop, develop a relationship with them, and you can still take on these larger projects. And a lot of times those fab shops have relationships with powder coating companies and they'll take those projects or all that metal work that they just did for you they'll truck it over to the powder coating company and have it powder coated so you can actually send them the file and then next thing you know you're picking up that project from the powder coater and it is completely done for you it's honestly a nice option even if the project is big enough or small enough for you to do in your own shop maybe you're just too busy to take it on so you just sub it out anyways you guys get the point i'm not going to keep repeating myself sub it out if it's too big or whatever the case might be now, everyone's situation's different. Everyone's got different shop needs and different shop sizes. Certain equipment, I can't even have in my shop because I only have single phase power coming in here. A lot of that larger equipment, it's set up for three phase. I don't have that kind of power here. Most people don't. So I'd have to say that this whole process is probably pretty relatable for most people with small little fab shops. Well, that's gonna wrap this one up. I hope that information was helpful for you. If it was, or if you just enjoyed the video or maybe getting some sneak peeks of some future projects coming up here, please hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss some of these cool projects coming up. And like always, links in the description for the Langmere. Save yourself a hundred bucks. It's not much, but it's something. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. And I forgot who it was, but someone accused me of selling my laser engravers after I got them. You are incorrect. Monport CO2 laser, X-Tool S1, and the X-Tool P2 CO2 laser, and from way back, the Ortur Laser Master 3. So no, I do not sell my lasers after I get them. I get them because I'm going to use them. And I would never recommend a product to you if I didn't want it or believe in it myself or think it was worth it. And those, they're worth it. So. I'm keeping them. Forever. Maybe. I'm gonna change this whole scene. This is stupid.